Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. I'm Tim Tampa Bay Meteorologist Grant Gilmore here with you. It's about 8.36 now, so if you're watching us live, good morning to you. Glad to uh, have you along with us. If you're watching later on the day, make sure you uh, check on the latest forecast as uh, every few hours or so, we'll get a new update from the Hurricane Center. And then every six hours or so, we'll get a, a new forecast track from the Hurricane Center. So specifically talking about Tropical Storm Delta first, but we also have Tropical Storm Gamma in the Gulf of Mexico this morning. So um, a couple of things to look at, but at least here in Tampa Bay, nothing to be e immediately concerned with. Obviously, any storm that's in the Gulf of Mexico, you want to keep a close eye on. Don't sleep on it. But um, I think here in Tampa Bay, we are going to be just fine. So again, hopefully you guys are having a good Monday morning so far. Hopefully you had a good weekend and uh, back at it with a new week and, and now a new named storm. Tropical Storm Delta developed uh, just about 30 minutes ago, maybe a little bit more than that, just southwest of Jamaica right now in the northwestern Caribbean. Uh, most of the thunderstorm activity associated with Delta is on the southern side of the storm. Uh, let me get back to that right now. And show you that because there um that's where we saw this little jog to the south uh, right when it developed so all those thunderstorms have been generally on the southern side so the center of the storm obviously right there where our little icon is but this is where most of the thunderstorm activity has been all morning long and i'll loop it and you'll see as the storm was chugging along to the west, um, most of the storms stayed to the south. And what we can see with developing systems is kind of a, a redevelopment of that surface circulation. And that's what we saw. So the surface circulation is still on the northern side of all the convection. Eventually, I think this is all going to start to fill in and, and we'll see the whole system align a lot better over the next couple of days. And as it begins to align and, and start to to track to the north and west, that's when we're going to begin to see that strengthening that could eventually have it become a hurricane as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico uh, into Wednesday morning and then potentially a category two hurricane uh, as we get into um, the mid and second half of the week. Right now there is a hurricane watch in effect for the western tip of Cuba and also a tropical storm watch for portions of Cuba as well. Let you let me show you the forecast track here. This is this has not been updated since the five o'clock morning advisory from the Hurricane Center. We'll get our newest forecast track from the Hurricane Center at eleven o'clock this morning. But you can see if you haven't seen it yet today that it's it's looking like the the storm gradually strengthens as we go through the first half of the week as it enters the Gulf of Mexico Wednesday morning is when it's likely to strengthen to a category one hurricane and we expect it to gradually strengthen all the way through um, at least Thursday. There is some indication that with some cooler water there in the northern Gulf of Mexico and a little bit of shear that we could see it weaken slightly before landfall. You know, that's always the hope that a storm would weaken before landfall, but you'll notice wind speeds Thursday morning forecast to be around 105 miles per hour with a forecast wind speeds of around 100 miles per hour Friday morning right before landfall. Now remember your cone of uncertainty here uh, still gives a good range in where the storm could be. You're looking at anywhere between the western panhandle of Florida to potentially um, the upper coast of Texas. Uh, but this central Gulf region is definitely tired of the 2020 hurricane season to say the least. Uh, this could be the fifth named storm to make landfall along the central coast, central Gulf Coast this season, if not the third hurricane. So we'll see. And the forecast models are actually in fairly good agreement. I'm not sure why this is not showing the uh, forecast models. Let me, let me open this up here and try to get this resolved real quick here. So I, I apologize for this little bit of a behind the scene look, but I wanna show you guys the, uh, the spaghetti plots here. Let's see, for some reason they are not showing Let's see, Delta, there we go. Let's try this again here. So back to our map here, Tropical Storm Delta. The forecast models have been in pretty good agreement for where the storm is going to track. But anytime you have this sharp curve in the storm, like what we're seeing sometime happen, sometime probably that's gonna be Thursday into Friday. I always get nervous that that, that turn might happen here uh maybe here and because there's going to be that curve to the north and east 
you kind of see why I'm, I'm going to keep a close eye on because if you have a curving system that does something like that, uh, that would be obviously a concern for us here in Tampa Bay. Now, look, there, there's fairly good agreement between all the forecast models that that's going to happen much farther to the west and to the north, and then there's going to be that impact somewhere along the central Gulf Coast. So, again, nothing to get worried about here in Tampa Bay, but me just, I don't trust tropical storms. <laughs> And, um, and I'm sure a lot of you don't either. So the forecast models, again, when you have agreement, when you have that consensus, there's a fairly higher confidence, or at least a relatively higher confidence that it's, it's going where the forecast models are going to say it's going to go. But again, we've got to keep a close eye on it. Uh, the timing for all of this, if you've got folks up in the Central Gulf Coast region or even up in the Panhandle of Florida, looking like those tropical storm force winds could be arriving sometime Thursday afternoon. So it's time for them to start thinking about the preparations and uh, what they would need to do to prepare for a hurricane. Whether it's a Category 1 or a Category 2, it's still a hurricane and there's going to be that threat for coastal surge along with heavy rainfall and obviously those hurricane force winds. So you're looking at some time through the day on Thursday, they're going to want to make sure that they're wrapped up with those preparations. You'll see though, we are right on the fringe here in Tampa Bay to potentially receive those tropical storm force winds. We had about a 2% chance that we would see those uh, wind speeds in excess of 40 miles per hour. So not a concern right now, but like I said, um, I don't trust those tropical storms that make those curves in the, the central Gulf. So we'll watch it closely and we'll make sure to pass along any and every update that there is with the forecast thinking and uh, the projections with those forecast models. I did want to show you guys this just because, gosh, you got to feel for the people in the Central Gulf Coast, you know. Um, if all comes to fruition the way that it looks like it does with Delta, this would be the fifth named storm to make landfall along the Central Gulf Coast. You had Cristobal relatively early in the season. And then, so the, the crystal ball was a tropical storm when it made landfall, made landfall um, near the mouth of the Mississippi, just south of New Orleans. And then you had Laura, everybody remembers Laura made landfall uh, in southwestern Louisiana as a category four hurricane. That was just a monster of a hurricane that came ashore. And then a little bit later you had Marco. Marco was actually forecast to be a stronger system, if not a hurricane at landfall, it weakened significantly, almost surprisingly so, uh, right before it made landfall. So a weak tropical storm when it made landfall near the mouth of the Mississippi then weakened pretty quickly to a tropical depression as it moved farther to the west there. And then you have uh, most recently Sally that made landfall in Gulf Shores, Alabama. and. Um, yeah, moved up into the panhandle of uh, western Florida. So that's four named systems, and then obviously tropical or delta, what's now tropical storm delta, forecast to become hurricane delta, is forecast to make landfall anywhere between eastern Texas and the Florida panhandle. So you're looking at that area that has already seen four named storms and two hurricanes, and now potentially three hurricanes on the way. Uh, I do want to mention Tropical Storm Gamma. Gamma is still out there, uh, just chugging along. It has been sheared apart almost completely. All of the thunderstorms are now well up to um, the northeast of it. So the shear is taking all the storms actually over Tampa Bay this morning. And then the storm is finally beginning to drift to the west now. So the storm is going to continue to move away from some of that wind shear. So it should maintain tropical storm strength as it tracks farther to the west-southwest. In fact, let me show you the forecast track from the Hurricane Center. So it takes it to the southwest. It likely stays a tropical storm through the middle of the week. It'll turn back to the north as we go into Thursday and Friday at that point. It's probably a depression, if not just a remnant low pressure system as it moves back into the central Gulf of Mexico. And by that point, I really don't think it's gonna be able to hang on. It encounters some more of that shear and it probably dies down once again. So less of a concern with gamma, more of a concern with now delta um, as it enters the scene. Speaking of which, I wanna show you the, the names that we've had so far. All of those are storms that we've had this year. Now, I think it's worth noting that we've only had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hurricanes so far. So you're talking about out of 25 named storms to only have eight hurricanes. That's sort of a blessing in disguise, I think. Obviously, you don't want that many named storms in the season. It's just, it's just way too many. 
but to, to only have eight hurricanes out of all those named storms is certainly good. Now, probably going to get a hurricane out of Delta there, so you know we'll we'll probably have to update this map over the next few days. But still, um, a very very active season. I always try to find the, the positives and all of that, and and that is that the hurricane, or at least the intensity of all these systems, you know, could have been much much worse. That said, you know we had a Category Four hurricane Laura make landfall in Louisiana, so. Um, we can't forget about that. Uh, in any case, guys, I just want to give you guys a, a quick update this morning as we as we get a new week started. And, and like I said at the beginning of the, the Facebook Live, a new week brings a new name storm with Tropical Storm Delta now in the northwestern Caribbean, tracking to the northwest, probably having it become Hurricane Delta uh, before the middle of the week. It looks like sometime Tuesday night to Wednesday morning it will strengthen into a hurricane. So. I appreciate you guys checking in. Of course, we'll have more updates as we go through the rest of the week, and we'll see how the system evolves. And, you know, there's always the chance that it doesn't. There's always a the chance that it strengthens even more. In fact, some of the forecast models do predict it becomes a Category 3 hurricane before landfall. So the Central Gulf Coast needs to start thinking about their preparations right now. Uh, of course, always listen to lo local officials about any evacuations that might uh, come into play over the next few days. And, of course, we'll make sure to pass along anything to you as we can. So you guys have a great week. Thanks for joining us uh, on this Monday morning. And I'll try to be with you each day this week to give you more updates as um, Delta begins to move into the Gulf of Mexico. So have a good Monday, have a good week, and we'll be in touch.